Hi, it's Dr. Nancy Evans from Holtorf Medical Group. I'm here to talk to you today about thyroid hormone and how it affects women's health. First of all, the thyroid hormone affects everybody. It's a small gland here that sits at the base of the neck, and the hormone itself goes into every cell in the body. It goes right into the nucleus and turns it on. So when you've got enough thyroid, of course your whole body works fine if you don't have other health issues. So what happens when your thyroid is not working optimally? I'm really just going to talk mainly about hypothyroidism, which is low thyroid. So it means you have a deficiency. So it's as if you have 100 rooms in your house and you only have 50 keys. So what is the body going to do in that case? It's going to preserve your function and keep you in survival mode. It's going to keep your heart running and it's going to keep you breathing and keep you alive, but we're going to have a whole subset of symptoms that are going to lower your optimal health. We're going to see cold hands, dry skin, hair loss, drier hair and hair loss. We're going to see the metabolism shut down. And what does that mean? We'll see constipation, we'll see fatigue, we'll see you not absorbing your food correctly. And of course, weight gain. That's the big one that a lot of women see concerns about. And we're going to see just this overall fatigue. So you'll see hypothyroid patients, men and women, but especially it, hap it does happen more with women, well, this tremendous fatigue, they're sleeping all day long, they sleep all night, they have to nap after work, and they're just completely exhausted. And if you think about it, it's because the body is trying to just preserve this energy. So it says, put you to sleep, and then you can survive a long time. Great for survival, horrible for any kind of thriving, right? You couldn't run a business, raise your family, um, you know, be an athlete or anything like that because thyroid is so central to your functioning. Um, we also see brain fog and depression. So you'll see a lot of women that are moody and depressed, a little bit more depression. Sometimes you'll see anxiety as well. It's the same mechanism. Your body thinks you don't have enough energy, so it's going to conserve energy. You're going to think more slowly. You're going to feel depressed, and again, you'll lie down, and you'll sleep, and you'll conserve energy. So the picture is really quite... Um, it can be quite severe where people come in and they're just having this tremendous brain fog and depression and fatigue and weight gain. So that's the whole basis of a pretty severe diagnosis of hypothyroidism. And of course, we'll see a wide range of that with a little bit of sluggish weight or a little bit of fatigue after exercise and all these kind of baseline symptoms. Then we see it really affecting the menstrual cycles. Thyroid does have to do with uh, puberty, so we'll sometimes see delayed puberty. So if you've got a teenage daughter and she still hasn't gotten her period, it might be because her thyroid is low. And especially if you start seeing weight gain, then that can also have some issues and it can be part of what's going on with hypothyroidism. Then we'll see in younger patients in their 20s, we'll see just irregular periods. Initially, if, it's, if the thyroid is low, as I said, we'll see delayed onset of puberty. And then we might see oligomenorrhea. So maybe someone um, only gets a period once every few months or maybe a couple times a year before they really start to kick in and be regular. That is fairly regular for puberty, but it also can be uh, a symptom of hypothyroidism if it goes on for too long. So that means that the woman is not ovulating every cycle, so she's not developing this healthy hormonal cycles. So uh, I'll have a lot of patients come in, they'll either have like fewer cycles like that. We'll also see ones that are having menorrhagia, that's the heavy, heavy bleeding, those heavy clots. And of course, with that, we see cramping, we see breast tenderness, we see bloating, we see also the, the mood changes before uh, before the period. So we used we usually look at PMS as a symptom of thyroid, excuse me, of hormonal changes, but there have been a lot of studies showing that actually this is thyroid related. And we really see proof in that here. When I have patients come in with a lot, especially those heavy periods, and if they're slightly hypothyroid, we put them on the appropriate thyroid medication and their periods start to lighten up and become a little bit closer to being more regular. 
So there's, as you can see, the thyroid is affecting everything in the body. And again, survival and logical, if you don't have enough thyroid in the body, the body does not want to create healthy hormones. It doesn't think you have enough energy to support another living being inside of you. So it's really important for this foundation, then especially to boost things during, uh, during healthy menstrual cycles and pregnancy. During pregnancy, uh, the T4, which is the main thyroid hormone, there usually is about a 50% increase in need of T4 during pregnancy. So a lot of women aren't even diagnosed with hypothyroidism until they become pregnant. When they start checking their levels and they find that they're, they're low and then that's going to affect fetal development. So this is very, very important. And then what causes all these, if there are irregular pregnancies, we'll see this with hypothyroidism, same reason. The body doesn't have enough energy, and so we'll see, um, um, we'll see pregnancies that, that don't hold. We'll see higher miscarriage. One of the main uh, causes of miscarriage also is Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So that's a subset of low thyroid. It has an autoimmune component to it. So it's really important to get those levels checked. It's a different sort of uh, aspect of hypothyroidism, but many of the symptoms are quite the same. And it also is this sort of miscarriage or kind of rejecting of the fetus um, in early pregnancy development. Um, usually during pregnancy, we do have to take, if someone is already on thyroid medication, we will have to take their doses up, again, to just support this new life um, for pregnancy. So it's a really good idea before you get pregnant to get a full thyroid panel. Your gynecologist or your OB will usually check the TSH, but that's not the only test to do, especially if you're symptomatic. So there's a lot of discussion about what tests to order, so I'll run through those fairly quickly and just talk about how you can start seeing whether your thyroid is healthy enough for you to develop and have a happy, happy healthy life as a young 20-something, or if you're going to get pregnant, or, or if you're not. Um, the, you should get your lab test drawn. We have a full panel that we recommend, so TSH. And then there's, that just checks the brain sort of um, oversight of the thyroid, but you really have to check the actual levels of thyroid hormone. So we've got T4, T3, there's another test called reverse T3, which is really just fine tuning your levels. And then two tests that are very important to do, and those are the two antibodies tests. So antithyroglobulin, as well as thyroid perox peroxidase antibody. So these will, those, these will rule out Hashimoto's, which is the, the autoimmune thyroid disease. So that's the full panel you wanna do. Sometimes we, most of the time we recommend you also get a thyroid ultrasound to make sure there's no irregular cellular structure happening. Uh, that can also cause, that, that will show up, it'll be another proof that, gosh, your thyroid is not functioning optimally. Um, we also see thyroid disorders kind of show up with, with 40 and 50 year olds too. It's just a general decline of thyroid and maybe other functions in the body. So that's another good time to get your thyroid checked, especially for women. If you start having menopausal symptoms, having more fatigue, we'll see that fatigue and the weight gain during menopausal time. Sometimes thyroid hormone really just needs to be optimized. So that's about it for thyroid hormones. It's essential that it's working properly because it goes into right into the nucleus of the cell. If you don't have enough, you really, it's like running your car with an empty gas tank. So make sure you get those checked, especially if you're younger and you're having these irregular periods or you're thinking about getting pregnant. You want to make sure you're as robust as you can in order to uh, have a healthy pregnancy. So thank you very much.